In the early 18th century, England was ruled by Queen Anne. Abigail Hill, hired as a maid at the royal palace, begins to integrate herself with the queen. Sarah, who has the queen's ear and significant influence over the country's politics, is now in danger as her position as the queen's confidant and favorite is threatened, leading to a power struggle between the two women. Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Mystery Recaps. Today we will recap a 2018 drama comedy movie named The Favorite. To know what happens later, keep on watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In the opening scene of the movie, Queen Anne turns to her right-hand woman, Sarah, and inquires about her recent speech. Sarah responds that it was well received, to which the Queen nods in approval before blindfolding her and leading her to a mysterious room. Once there, the Queen unveils a breathtaking portrait of the palace and declares it to be Sarah's. But Sarah, ever the voice of reason, cautions against such a decision, reminding the Queen that the war is still raging on. What do you think? How come Sarah is so close to the Queen, and why does the Queen wish to gift her the palace? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. The following day, a carriage rolls up to the palace gates and out steps Abigail, a young woman with a troubled past. As she disembarks from the carriage, a man takes liberties with her, causing Abigail to stumble and fall into the mud. When she enters the palace, she is covered in filth and the odor of horse manure. A maid greets her and escorts her to Sarah, also known as the Lady Baroness. Despite her embarrassment, Abigail presents a letter from her uncle, who is Abigail's father, and introduces herself. In a grand palace, the royalty of the kingdom had gathered to witness the thrilling spectacle of a duck race. Amidst the excitement, a chieftain of the queen named Harley approached Sarah with a pressing question. He wanted to know what spell she had cast upon the queen to earn the gift of a palace. As the prime minister and Sarah's husband approached, Harley made a bold proposal that the kingdom should make peace with France rather than continuing the war. Sarah, confident in their current victory, rebuffed the idea, but Harley was unrelenting. He pointed out that the kingdom was running low on funds and that the merchants could no longer sustain the costs of the conflict. The prime minister, while hesitant, seemed to agree with Harley's logic, but Sarah's husband stood by her side. Later, Sarah was summoned by the queen to her chambers. The queen was eager to meet with the Russian ambassador, but when she asked Sarah for her opinion on her appearance, Sarah was candid. She told the queen that she looked like a badger and was not fit to meet such an important figure. With a gentle touch, Sarah reassured the queen, telling her to return to her room and leave the matter to her. Abigail grinded away in the bustling palace kitchen alongside other maidens, tasked with loads of work. As she knelt down to mop the floor, a sudden sting jolted through her hand. Upon inspection, she realized that her skin had come into contact with the harsh lye solution and that she should have been wearing gloves. Panicking, she sprinted to the basin to rinse her burn, casting a suspicious glance toward the lady who had assigned her the task without warning. Just as she finished, a commotion echoed through the palace halls. The queen was wailing and crying out in pain, her foot marred by wounds. Sarah summoned the maidens to comfort the distressed monarch. Abigail attended to the queen's wounds. Determined to find a cure, Abigail set out early the next morning to gather herbs. As she plucked and crushed the plants, a man on horseback appeared on the horizon, observing her every move. Fearful of being caught, Abigail hastily mounted her horse and rode back to the palace. She snuck into the queen's bedchamber, eager to apply the herb remedy, but was interrupted by Sarah's sharp voice. The lead maid ordered the guards to seize Abigail and punish her for her audacity. Just as Abigail was being punished for her actions, Sarah burst into the kitchen, putting a stop to the proceedings, regarding Abigail with a mixture of surprise and respect. Sarah told Abigail that she seemed to be too kind for her own good, and asked her to bring more of the healing herb that had worked wonders on the queen. In that moment, Sarah's trust in Abigail was solidified. At Sarah's request, Abigail was moved to a separate room where she could be more easily monitored. The next day, as Abigail accompanied Sarah to the queen's chamber, they were intercepted by a powerful chieftain. Sarah jokingly offered him a taste of her new maid, gesturing towards Abigail. As they entered the room, they found Harley and the Prime Minister sitting on the sofa. Harley exclaimed that they were told they would be meeting the Queen, not a mere maid. Sarah coolly replied that she would be representing the Queen at the meeting and announced that the Queen had no intention of stopping the war, but rather planned to continue it. When Harley asked about funding, Sarah stated that the land tax would be doubled. Harley was taken aback, pointing out that this decision would likely start a war within their own country rather than outside. He demanded a face-to-face -face meeting with the queen, but Sarah refused, causing Harley to storm out in anger. At a festival held within the palace walls, Harley approached the queen with his concerns over the proposed land tax increase, but the queen directed him to speak with Sarah instead. However, as Sarah was seen dancing with another man, the queen's anger boiled over, and she ordered Sarah to take her back to the queen's chamber. On the way, Sarah tried to apologize to the queen, but instead received a harsh slap. The two women, now locked in a passionate embrace, didn't notice Abigail lurking in the shadows until it was too late. As she snuck out, Abigail's mind was still processing the intimate scene she had just witnessed. Meanwhile, Harley stumbled upon her. 
The two strolled into the fields, and Harley tried to extract information about Sarah. But Abigail remained tight-lipped and refused, and the next day, when she told Sarah about this, while suggesting that she has knowledge of their confidential matter and her discretion, Sarah gave a subtle warning in case Abigail breaks her trust. As Sarah found herself overwhelmed with responsibilities, she delegated the task of attending to the Queen to Abigail. What do you think? Did Sarah make the right choice? Let us know in the comments section. Initially, the Queen was dissatisfied and demanded to see Sarah instead. However, Abigail was able to win over the Queen by complimenting her pet rabbits and listening to her stories about her lost children. As a result, the Queen enjoyed spending time with Sarah. At night, the Colonel Masha, who Sarah had jokingly referred to as a potential suitor for Abigail, visited her in her room and they shared a kiss. The next day, while riding horses with the Queen, Sarah apologized for sending Abigail in her place, but the Queen said she didn't mind. This made Sarah suspicious, and she later discovered Abigail dancing with the Queen. In a confrontational conversation, Sarah told Abigail she no longer needed to attend to the Queen. But when a servant approached to say the Queen wanted to see Abigail, Sarah stormed into the Queen's room and accused her of trying to make her jealous. Sarah attempted to assert her dominance by choking the Queen, but the maid interrupted before she could do more. It appeared that the competition between Sarah and Abigail was now reaching a boiling point. Abigail understood that if she wanted to win the heart of the Queen, she needed to act swiftly. One day, as the Queen entered her bedchamber, she was greeted by the sight of Abigail sleeping on her bed. Upon waking up, Abigail apologized and swiftly dressed herself to leave. The Queen couldn't help but admire Abigail's bare body, but remained silent. Later that evening, the Queen requested Abigail's presence, and it wasn't long before she was spotted giving the Queen pleasure. Meanwhile, Sarah was eager to see the Queen as she had missed her practice. In the middle of the night, she entered the Queen's bedchamber, only to find Abigail sleeping next to the Queen. The next day, Sarah let her anger and sense of betrayal get the best of her and fired Abigail. But it was too little too late. Abigail, devastated, hid herself with a book and broke down in tears outside the Queen's bedchamber. When the Queen found out what had happened, she made Abigail her maid of bedchamber. The following day, Sarah tried to win the Queen over by inviting her for wine in her bedchamber. The Queen fell for it and temporarily freed Abigail. Abigail couldn't stand the sight and decided to take action. The next day, when Sarah entered the Queen's bedchamber, Abigail prepared a cup of tea spiked with drugs. Sarah drank the tea, and as she headed off to attend to important matters, she fell asleep on her horse and was carried away far into the distance. The Queen, Anne, who believed Sarah had abandoned her out of spite, had become so close to Abigail. With Harley's support, Abigail is able to secure a marriage to Colonel Masham, reclaiming her status as a noble baroness. But her climb to power was far from over. With the backing of Harley, Abigail began influencing the Queen to stop the war. When Sarah returned, Abigail extended a peace offering to her, but was met with rejection and a slap. Sarah presented Queen Anne with an ultimatum. Either she change her stance on the war and banish Abigail, or face the exposure of their intimate correspondences in letters written between Sarah and the Queen. Sarah claimed that Abigail only flattered the Queen and lacked genuine affection. Out of remorse, Sarah burned the letters, but the Queen still exiled her from the palace. Godolphin intervened, encouraging Sarah to write a letter to the Queen and convincing her to reconcile with Sarah. The Queen eagerly awaited for Sarah's letter, but when Abigail presented supposed evidence of Sarah's embezzling money after being appointed as Keeper of the Privy Purse, Queen Anne used Abigail's allegations as justification to bar Sarah and her husband from entering Britain. As the Queen Anne relaxed in her chamber, she was suddenly jolted awake by the frantic scream of one of her beloved bunnies. Upon rising from her bed, the Queen discovered Abigail mistreating the animal, a sight that filled her with anger. Despite her weakened state, the Queen took hold of Abigail, forcing her to kneel and provide a massage to her leg. The Queen applied increasing pressure to Abigail's head as she cruelly pulled her hair, causing Abigail to writhe in pain and resist the brutal treatment. The end. So guys, that's it for today. Check out this video on the screen to watch this amazing movie recap. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon to never miss any exciting movie recaps.